Hello! In this video, I'm showing you how to and how not to fit a radiator valve onto a new column radiator. Now, fitting a radiator valve onto a column radiator should be pretty much the same as fitting it onto a normal radiator. But I do tend to find that the threads are slightly different on a column radiator, so it needs a slightly different approach when it comes to fitting the radiator valve. And if you get it wrong, you may find your radiator valves start leaking in a couple of months' time. Just like this poor homeowner who had these valves poorly fitted by another plumber. And she had little pots underneath each valve catching water as all four valves were leaking. So if you don't want that happening to you, then maybe you should watch the video to the end, but it'll also give you a couple of extra little tips that you need to watch out for. Just before I get on with it, I want to quickly let you know that I made lots of other help videos and you'll find a lot of those links to those videos down in the description below. Now here's the two radiators that have been asked to come and repair because they are both leaking really badly where the valve connects onto the radiator. I've now repaired both these radiators so there's no longer the little pots underneath catching the water. But here's what they looked like when I first came to the property with little pots underneath catching the water dripping out of the radiators. And when I wipe along the joint where the radiator valve goes into the radiator, you can clearly see the water on my finger where that joint is leaking. Unfortunately, here's a towel rail which that same plumber fitted and you can see where the valves connect onto the radiator. Again, you can see there's been leaking around there. So unfortunately, this plumber has not done a great job. And you can also see the stains on the floor where they've been leaking. And when I looked in the boiler cupboard, there'd also been a leak on the floor in there coming from one of the fittings above it. So when you're looking to get any work done around your house, make sure that the person you're deciding to use is well recommended. Back to the radiators that I'm going to repair. The first thing that I do is turn off the boiler and I close both the valves underneath the boiler to isolate the boiler from the system. Doing this allows me to repair the valves without having to drain the entire system. Now I'd only close these valves if I was working on the system with a combination boiler. If you have a boiler with loft tanks, I would look to bung up the loft tank again so I don't have to drain the entire system. If you want to know how to bung your loft tank, of course I made a video on how to do that. Find it in the cards above now or down in the description. I then turn off both the valves on the radiator that I'm going to repair. So that's the lock shield and the thermostatic radiator valve both closed. Now I'd already started work when I decided to start filming and I realized that this was a really good opportunity to show you how not to fit a radiator valve onto a radiator. So I'd already removed the thermostatic radiator valve from the radiator. But I'll show you how to remove a radiator valve from a radiator in just a minute. So now I'm going to find out how tight this fitting is going into the radiator. Now it should be really tight, but look, it's not tight at all. That is shocking. Surely the other plumber knew this was not going to last. So whilst I'm undoing this tail from this radiator valve, you'll see there's a bit of blue paper in the end of the tail. That's to stop the water from coming out of the radiator because I'm not actually draining this radiator at all. So it's still full of water. And when I finally remove the tail, I'm going to get a whole lot more water suddenly glug out of the radiator. But I'll quickly just block that hole up with a bit of kitchen paper. Don't use toilet paper because it falls apart and wet wipes are also very good as well. So I'm now going to remove the tail like that. And there you go, there's water glugging out. I just pop the bit of paper in the hole and there we are. That stops the water from coming out. So now I can work on this tail. Now I'm going to clean off all the old PTFE tape. Once I've unwound as much as I can, I'm then going to use a wire brush just to clean it up to get it nice and shiny again. And there we go, it's all nice and clean now and ready to be reused. Now these radiator valve tails, they vary in size depending on what brand you use. And the cheaper valves seem to use a little less brass, meaning that the screw thread is a tiny little bit smaller. And when you screw it into the radiator, it then tends to be a little bit loose. I'm now just going to give the outside of the radiator here a bit of a clean, just clean off those dirty marks there. And there we go, that's nice and clean now. Now I find that PTFE tape doesn't always work well with this style of radiator. So instead I tend to use this Loctite 55 PTFE sealing cord. I think it's very robust and fills in those little gaps that little bit better. Now I hold the tail in my left hand and I wrap the cord round in a clockwise direction. So that's the same direction of the thread. 
so when I screw it in it doesn't undo the cord it actually makes the cord tighter now it says you only need a couple of wires but you can see I'm putting far more on than that that's because I know this spigot is going to be a little bit loose inside the radiator and I want to fill in those gaps I've probably wrapped it around between 10 and 15 times just before I put it in the radiator, I'm just going to put a bit of paper up inside the hole there. So when I put it in the radiator, I'm not going to have water continuously running out. Now I'm going to carefully remove this bit of paper, making sure it all comes out. Then pop the tail into the radiator and just screw it up. Whenever I'm doing a job like this, I always have my water vacuum to hand. If you don't have a water vacuum, always make sure you've got plenty of towels and buckets and bowls just in case they're needed. I'm now going to tighten the tail up into the radiator. Now I want this to go really nice and tight. I don't want it to be loose at all. If it's at all loose, then it may start leaking in a few months time. Now, like I said, this homeowner had this job done by another plumber and then eight months later, all the connections of these tails into the radiators were leaking. Now I've pretty much finished tightening this up. I'm just going to remove the bit of string, which uh, has just kind of works its way out it's quite normal and i'm just going to cut that off with the blade but really i want this just a little bit tighter and the problem is that this tail is vanishing inside the radiator and there's hardly anything left me to turn and i feel i still want to turn this a couple more times to make it tight enough so decision made i'm going to start again and try using a different tail because at the end of the day i don't want to be getting a phone call to say that there is a leak so here I have a different radiator valve tail. Now this tail comes from a Drayton RT212. And you can see the thread is longer and the tube part is also longer. Now you may not know that the threads on these tails are actually tapered thread. So it starts off a little bit smaller and as you work your way up the thread it gets slightly bigger and bigger. So as you screw it in the radiator it gets tighter and tighter because the screw thread is getting bigger. Now I'm doing exactly the same again. I'm wrapping the cord around the tail. I'm trying to crisscross it as I go because that's what was recommended to me by one of the sales reps. So now I think I'm happy with that. I can just break it off, wrap the final bit around and now I'm ready to screw it back into the radiator. So once again, I pop the bit of paper into the end like that. I can then pull the other bit out of my radiator, expect some water to come out again. And there we are. Now I can just pop that into there and screw that up nice and tight. So already as I'm doing the tail up, I can feel it's getting tighter and there's still plenty of threads on show. So I think this tail is a much better choice. If you'd like more detailed information about replacing radiator valves, I made other videos all about how to do that. And of course you'll find those in the description below. Now I'm much happy this time, this has gone really nice and tight. There's far less cord coming out of the joint this time, but I can just clean those little excess bits off and then just cut them away with a knife again to make it a nice clean job. Now I'm just loosening this bottom nut here. Hopefully you'll remember that I isolated the boiler and I've also turned off both the radiator valves. So that means the system is still full of pressure. So before I go removing this valve, I need to drop the pressure on the system. And the easiest way to do that is just to open up this thermostatic radiator valve. And you can see all the pressure is coming out and I'm sucking it up with my water vacuum. Because I loosen that bottom there, means I can turn the radiator valve around, making it much easier to catch the water. And there we go, it's just coming to the end now. So all the pressure has gone from my system. So I'll be able to remove the valve. Now I can put a new nut and a new olive onto the tail. I can now remove the thermostat and give it a bit of a clean. Now I can see the plumber beforehand has used joining compound on here. So I'm just going to clean off that old joining compound. Make sure we got nice clean seating so I can reapply some fresh joining compound myself. Now I'm going to reapply some joining compound. Now all we need to do here is just get a little blob on our finger and just gently wipe it around the seating on the radiator valve so that's just where the olive is going to sit you can see i'm just wiping it around the edge and make sure i got a nice even spread all the way around i regularly see diyers putting ptfe tape and joining compound all over the threads on radiator valves that's not what seals a radiator valve 
Just before I get on with the rest of the video, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video at all useful, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up or the subscribe. You can ring on the bell if you want to receive a notification. And of course, you can share the video with your friends. If you visit my website, I have categorized all my videos on products and parts that I recommend so you can easily find what you're looking for. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's bought me a cup of coffee and left me a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Where the olive on the pipe touches up against the radiator valve, that is the part which does all the sealing, nothing else. So there's no point in putting PTFE tape or joining compound and over any of the threads apart from the one which goes into the radiator on the radiator tail. And obviously, as you've seen, that is really important to get a good seal on that joint. I can now just pop the TRV back onto the pipe and do up the nut. And make sure I remove that bit of paper. You don't want to leave that in there and get that blocking things up. So make sure that is removed. I can now put the thermostatic radiator valve onto the tail and do up the nut. I'm now going to remove the thermostatic head so I can just hold the valve a little bit better whilst I do up those nuts. With the valve pushed firmly and fully onto the tail, I can do up this bottom nut and there's no need to hold the valve with any other tools. But when it comes to doing this other nut here, I'll need to support the valve and make sure that I hold it with another spanner because if I try doing up this nut, the copper pipe is very soft. It's very easy for the valve to twist and then kink the pipe. So always support the valve with another pair of spanners or grips whilst you're doing this nut up. Now I kind of blocked your view here, but that's what I'm doing. I'm holding that valve and stopping it from turning whilst I do up this other nut. I didn't need to replace the olive on the pipe because I could see there was nothing wrong with it. So I just need to replace the thermostatic head now. And there we go. That's that valve all made good again now. And I'm extremely confident that she's not going to get a leak on this valve again. One last clean off and there we go. Job done. So now let's take a look at the other end of the radiator and you can see again, lots of watermarks where this joint that goes into the radiator has been leaking. So how to undo those nuts on your radiator valve. Whenever you come to remove a radiator valve and you need to undo this nut right here, we need to support the valve so the valve doesn't move and damage that lower joint and start it leaking or even kink the pipe. So make sure that you support the valve like this and then undo the nut here. And there we go, that's the way to do it. And now I can now undo this nut and remove the valve. Providing the valve is firmly on the tail in the radiator, we can just use a spanner to undo this bottom nut. So now both nuts are just finger tight. So let's take a look and see how tight this fitting actually is. Oh my word, look at that, you can just move it. It's, it's I, I, words fail me, it's just completely loose. So I'm now going to do exactly the same as I did on the other radiator valve. So I'm just going to undo these nuts here. That's a little tight. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to undo the nut on the bottom first. But because I've already dropped the pressure on the system, I can now just undo this nut here. And instead of leaving the pipe open, I'm just going to put a cap on it just to make sure that no water just start suddenly running out. Now I can just remove the valve again and some water is going to start glugging out. So I just put a bit of kitchen paper in the hole. I can now just remove the entire tail from the radiator and again block up the radiator because more water is going to start running out when I do that. And there we go. Let's take a quick look at that tail. I'm not going to bother doing anything with it. I'm just going to replace it. So now I've got the new tail. I've already wrapped the cord around the tail. I've put it into the radiator and now I just got to do it up. And again, I want to make sure this goes really nice and tight. You can see I've got a little bit of kitchen paper in the end of the tail just to stop that water from running out of the radiator. And you can see I'm pushing down really hard on that spanner so I know this fitting is going really tight, which is exactly what I want. Again, a little bit of cord has come out so I'm just going to use my blade and just trim that off and make it all look nice and pretty. I just noticed when I came to look at the old radiator valve, the plumber beforehand, he'd only put joining compound on the bottom joint. He'd not put it on the top joint. You can see both fittings are clean. And I would always use joining compound or PTFE tape or something like that whenever I am doing a compression fitting. So now I pop the new olive and nut on. I've put my joining compound on both seatings of the radiator valve. Pop that onto the radiator and do up both nuts finger tight. 
with the radiator valve pushed fully onto the tail i can do up the bottom nut and then i can support the radiator valve and do up the nut which goes onto the radiator then i just gotta open up the valve to where it was before put the cap on open up the thermostat on the other side and there we go job done so that's one radiator sorted out now i gotta do the second one now i didn't film this one but i did want to show you the pots underneath the radiator catching that dripping water and when i wipe my finger across the joint you can see it is definitely wet and it's leaking one last tip for you these blanking plugs and air bleeding points at the top of the radiators these want to be really nice and tight so i thought i'd check these because obviously the other nuts weren't that tight to see how tight these are and as i expected they all needed tightening up and like i said these ones be really nice and tight pretty much as tight as you can get them because if they're left a little loose what happens is the rubber seal will shrink a little bit over time dry a little bit and then they'll start leaking in a couple of years time and i do see this regularly so make sure they are nice and tight and here's a radiator in another property where you can see that blanking plug is leaking and the water is running down the radiator here's a little tip and a word of warning if you have cast iron radiators those are most likely to be old radiators which have been refurbished if you do that tapered thread up into the radiator too tight it is possible to crack a cast iron radiator and that would be a disaster this style of radiator is becoming quite fashionable now but the ones which you buy in the stores they are just made of mild steel so this shouldn't be a problem so now both radiators are fixed and they're no longer leaking i've opened up the valves on the boiler i've topped up the pressure i've bled the radiators turned the boiler back on and they're all working fine right that's about it then so i do hope my video has been helpful to you if you want to watch one of my other videos you can click on the links just here you can click on subscribe ring on the bell give me a thumbs up and as always my toolbox friend bye for now and i'll see you next time